Oh, that one just gets me, gets me heated. <laughs> So welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is the first time that you're ever watching a video. I was so excited when I put up the first one and so many of you guys wanted a part two. I actually wanted this video to, I don't know, just be a place where you could maybe learn things or ask things that you don't have someone in your personal life to ask or I don't know, just hang out and talk about things that we don't really talk about, but we should talk about. So that's why I'm here and I'm gonna talk about it some more. So I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some questions, which you have. Um, Yeah, we will jump right into this. All right, so the first question is, I'm afraid to let guys go down on me because I'm afraid that my vagina will smell bad. All right, so here's the thing. I understand being self-conscious of smelling bad down there, but a vagina is supposed to smell like a vagina. You are not supposed to smell like some coconut Hawaiian breeze strawberry cocktail. And as long as you are keeping up with showering and cleaning yourself, like your vagina will smell fine. And the worst thing that you can do for yourself is use any kind of products or, you know, really harsh perfumes or sprays. Like I know you want it to smell real good, but like, Put some lotion on your legs don't do anything to that region and you will smell completely fine but i remember like grade six me at bath and body works and the sprays that i would buy and i would be like ch -ch 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 -ch. and like that is not good for your vagina at all just leave it alone let it be and you will be fine do you enjoy having sex on your period and does it help with your cramps? See, when I was younger, I tried this and I thought that it would help my cramps, not realizing that you didn't actually need to have sex to get rid of your cramps, but you just had to orgasm. So for me, I still do try and orgasm when I'm on my period because I actually do think that it helps with my cramps, but I don't personally enjoy having sex on my period. I don't know, like when I have sex, I want to be able to enjoy it and be free. And I feel like when I'm on my period, I can't do that. And I'm just very in my head because I don't want to make a mess. So yeah, no, I definitely don't think that that's for me, but um, the benefits of having an orgasm when you're on your period are amazing. Okay, so I have a lot of questions about anal and tips and I wanna try this with my boyfriend, but I'm super scared and I get it. It is kind of terrifying. I feel like there's a lot of horror stories about it, but if you do it properly, it can be enjoyable. So my first tip would be to obviously do it with somebody that you're super comfortable with because it's not gonna be super sexy. There's a lot of communicating, is it in? Does this hurt? Ow, this hurts, ah, uh, stop. Like. There's a lot of that, which I don't know. I mean, you could try it on a first date. I just personally feel like it's better with someone that you you know. Number two would be to use a lot of lube. And three would be, this is kind of like a weird one. Make sure that you're like concentrating on your breathing. So I feel like when I tense up, my butthole tenses. That's, oh God, I'm so sorry guys. This is definitely demonetized. <laughs> but you really have to concentrate on like your breathing because if you're tensing up, your butthole is gonna go like this. So when you're tense, this is very hard, you know, that's not gonna go in. But if you're relaxing, it's kind of gonna go like this. And then it's much easier. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I hope that makes sense. But honestly, it's not as scary as people make it seem. I just think that, you know, you have to take the proper precautions and measures to make it enjoyable. And then also, go slow. Don't try and ram it in there, especially if you're a guy watching this, go slow. Please do not jam it in there because do you like when guys are loud or should they stay quiet? Oh, honey, vocal, loud. Oh, that's just the best. I love that so much. Does size really matter? Okay, honestly, I'm, I don't know if this is unpopular opinion. Maybe it is a popular opinion, but I honestly don't think that size is the main factor. I don't understand why people think that bigger is better because I kind of think that bigger sometimes means more painful and then you can't enjoy it as much because you're just like, ah. So no, I don't really think that bigger is better. I think that how you use it is what's gonna get you brownie points, what's gonna get you a five-star rating on this shit, you know what I mean? So yeah, no, I don't really think that size is the biggest deal. I think that it's more how you use it. Why does it hurt when I have sex? I mean, I'm obviously not a doctor, but 
one of the things that can hurt while you're having sex is if your man or your partner is hitting your cervix if you have i guess a shorter cervix or even sometimes it's the position like i know there was one position where it hurt so badly and that's because he's literally ramming your cervix and that does not feel good so i would say that if you do the same position a lot and that is hurting then switch it up find something different and see if it hurts during that but also don't be afraid to go to your doctor and tell them about it because it could be something way more than that but i'm just saying that from my experience Sometimes it hurts when the position is wrong and you're getting that right in the cervix. What is something that you wish you knew when you first started having sex? Oh, to pee after you have sex. I don't know why I was never taught that, but it's so important that you go to the bathroom after you have sex and make sure that like you clean yourself, especially if you are using a condom because some of the times lube that is on the condoms will give you not only a yeast infection but a uti and if you don't pee after sex it's just you're going to be more prone to getting an infection or uti so just always regardless if you're using protection if you're not using protection um to make sure that you're peeing after sex and cleaning up properly because i mean that's not fun no one wants that <laughs> my boyfriend doesn't like the way that i dress he says it's too revealing what should i do oh god I'm probably not the best person to ask this because I'm very passionate about this, okay? So being in a relationship with someone does not mean that you own them. You are allowed to be your own person in a relationship. You're allowed to dress the way that you want. You're allowed to, you know, do your hair, do your makeup, do whatever you want the way that you want to. And this whole, my boyfriend won't allow me to wear this because it's too revealing, honestly just screams insecurity to me well, me going out like this while my nice little boobies are showing is not disrespecting you in any way this is my body it does not always need to be sexual this is just anatomy i cannot take my boobs off before i go to you know the mall and i shouldn't have to hide myself because you are either insecure about other guys seeing me or you think that this is going to attract other men like if you are in a confident and strong relationship and you trust that person that you should not worry you know i should be able to go out naked and you should still trust me that i will be faithful to you so yeah this whole like my boyfriend won't let me wear this just doesn't fly with me because i'm like your boyfriend does not own you. A strong and, you know, confident man will recognize that and he won't be intimidated by that. Oh, that one just gets me, gets me heated. <laughs> Why can I never orgasm during sex? Is there something wrong with me? Honestly, that is such a common thing for females. Not all of us can orgasm through penetration and a lot of us do need, um, to have our clit stimulated. So whether that be by like a finger or a vibrator, um, there's definitely not nothing wrong with you if you can't do it just by penetration alone. So I don't know, my advice is obviously, I think it's just as important for the guy to finish than it is the girl. So just communicate with your boyfriend. If you also want to finish, then um, make it happen. I've never had sex before, but I'm really afraid of queefing. How common is it? So I don't actually know how common it is. I think that it probably differs to person to person or vagina to vagina, but um, I do know that the reason behind it is it's when air is being like pushed into your vagina. So it really depends on how the person is penetrating you. And if they're pulling all the way out and then putting it back in, you're gonna get air versus if someone's just inside you kind of going, in personal experience, I would say that doggy style is probably the worst position for it. I mean, it can happen with any position. It's, it's just a part of sex. It's just one of those unglamorous things that no one talks about, but it can happen. You just laugh it off and keep going. <laughs> I'm really embarrassed about the look of my vagina. I think that guys are going to think that I'm loose because my labias are bigger. So if you watch my first video on this, I kind of talk a little bit about vaginas and having fat vagina and being embarrassed about it. The tightness of your vagina does not come from your outer labias. That's literally just skin. The tightness of your vagina comes from inside. And this is the thing. I feel like guys use the term loose like oh your vagina's loose i mean i don't know anyone who's actually said that to an actual woman just probably on the internet being a troll but like women can have full-on babies like a baby's head come out of there and men still have the audacity to think that their penis that's about like that thick will loosen our vaginas 
make it make sense. The vagina is able to adapt. It can go this big and go back to being this big. You know what I mean? So a man's penis is not going to stretch you out and especially the outside of it, just because you have a bigger vagina or your labias are longer, it doesn't mean that the inside is any different than mine or someone else's or, you know, I mean, it's all relative. We all have different tightnesses, I'm sure, of our vaginas, but it doesn't mean anything. So don't let that scare you or stop you because, you know, if a man has any intelligence over a vagina, then he will know that they all look differently and they're all good. All vaginas are great. I really want to get with a girl someday, but how do you tell if a girl is also interested in you or not? Oh my God, this is funny because I literally have the worst gaydar detector. Like I never know. I'm like, are you just being nice to me or are you flirting with me? Because I've had experiences back in the day where I thought that this girl was into me and it turns out she was just being really friendly and really nice to me and was like, I'm not actually interested in girls. And I'm like, yeah, me neither. But I think nowadays, I think I would just have to be really open and communicate and ask them directly because I'm, I guess I'm more direct now that I'm more mature, I got older. So I think that, yeah, you just kind of have to ask them if they're interested in girls so that you're not wasting your time. Do you think it's important, even if I'm in a relationship that I get tested for STDs? Honestly, yes, I still think that it's super important. Even if you know that you are being completely faithful, you just, you never know. I mean, I don't want to create doubt in your guys' minds, but I just, I think, you know, we're all humans. You can't be too certain. I know that sounds terrible, but I just think it is really smart. I mean, just for your own sexual health that you take precautions. I mean, I'm not doubting your partners or whatever, but I do think that it is important. And I think that it's also super easy. All you have to do is go into your doctor's it literally takes two seconds. They just swab you and you're out the door. Also, if you're getting a pap test or a pap smear, they can do it at the exact same time. Yeah, I think that whether you're single, in a relationship, it's just important to take care of yourself and you can't be too sure because you just never know. All right, so last question is, I really wanna have my first time with a girl. This is a girl talking. Um, and she says that she's really scared that she won't know what to do. All right, so my advice to you is you have a huge advantage here because you are a female and that means that you know what females like. So what I always say is, do to them what you would want done to you. Do you think it's necessary for women to shave their pubic hair? Absolutely not. I think that whatever makes you feel good is what you should do. If you like to, you know, embrace the hairiness, that's cool. If you don't like that stuff, that's fine. If you wanna make a cool shape, a design, do that. But no, I don't think that you need to shave your pubic hair. And I also, this really grinds my gears. Why do we feel that we need to be hairless? Like, do guys think that we are just born like a naked mole rat like no as women we grow hair i mean i'm super hairy i know you wouldn't think that but like my hair is dark it is coarse and like that's life i'm not going to be embarrassed by that i'm not gonna have to feel like i need to shave especially if you are in a relationship you're not going to be shaved all the time and there's nothing wrong with that and it's also funny because i always hear where it's like the girl needs to be shaved like what about the guy if you're gonna put those standards on us we should put them back on them all right so that is all for part two of this q a i hope that you maybe learned something today and that you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys all in the next video whenever that is mm -hmm.